Live this morning as their mission is to shine the spotlight on those hostages and ensure they are not forgotten. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Of course. Well, first off, can you start by telling me about your son, Omir, and your understanding of what did happen to him on October 7th? Um, Omer is 22 years old. He actually celebrated his birthday a week after he was taken into captivity. And um, he, he grew up on Long Island. He's a true New Yorker, all-American kid, uh, sports enthusiast, uh, loves the New York Knicks, uh, played basketball, played volleyball. Very, very friendly kid. You know, this six foot five um, tall guy with a big smile on his face. Uh, very friendly and social, a lot of lot of friends, a real connector. Um, he he graduated high school and he was enrolled in college. He was going to go to Binghamton and decided to take a gap year before that and take his gap year in Israel. Uh, both Ronan and I are dual citizens of the United States and Israel. There's a big family there. And, and so he spent the year there, and throughout that year, he really connected with the land, connected with the people, with his new friends. You know, every Israeli kid, uh, 18 years old, has to enlist and do service and protect the country. And, um, and he felt that he should be doing the same thing, that he should do his share in serving and protecting uh, um, Israel. And so he enlisted in the IDF and uh, became a tank commander. And on October 7th, um, he was positioned on the border with Gaza. His mission was to protect the villages, the kibbutzim on the border. He was probably uh, one of the first responders to this crazy, horrible, atrocious attack. And um, he and his team were attacked um, in a way that they were not anticipating. And, um, and they were taken, two of them murdered. Uh, that day and their bodies taken to Gaza and Omer and another team member taken into Gaza and hopefully alive. And we haven't heard from him anything since. Yeah, since uh, since October 7, we haven't heard anything about uh, Omer's whereabouts and his condition. And I do want to ask because I, I can't even begin to imagine. I have spoken with many of the families like yourself who are essentially waiting for word here. What have the last more than 200 days been like for you and and for your family? So it's a it's a true roller coaster, right? We are stuck on October 7. Um, we actually, you know, we put that sticker on ourselves just to remind ourselves where are we in, in this horrible. Uh, sequence of events and and it's it's been 204 days today um and we just we, we don't know where we are we're just traveling the world meeting world leaders advocating in the behalf of of, of uh our son and and the other hostages making sure people don't forget them and and that all the leaders involved in this terrible crisis are doing everything they can to promote um a, a solution that will bring our son back and hopefully ceasefire and, and and peace to the region leaders of 18 different countries including the us and uk have put out essentially a statement over the last uh, several days or so that is calling for the immediate release of all of the hostages like your son held there in gaza what are your thoughts on that statement overall that was released now nearly seven months after the attack on October 7th? Well, it's it's long overdue and very appropriate. As you mentioned, there are multiple nations involved. It's not just an Israeli problem. And the fact that 17 countries united and came together with the declaration that those hostages as a global humanitarian crisis must come back and that Hamas must agree to some kind of settlement and and bring those hostages back is so critical and we we applaud those countries that that came together you know this was a very very intense week um something else that came out this week was a sign of life from uh, uh, another American hostage, Hirsch Goldberg, Poland. And we know that his family haven't heard 
hasn't heard anything from him since the day he was abducted. And this was the first sign of life. Um, this was very emotional for them, we're sure, and for us as well. Um, we become close with the family and getting a sign of life after such a long time is overwhelming. There's some comfort to it, but it also intensifies the sense of emergency. You know, these are real people. These are our children. They're being held against their will. They're, they're, we know that the conditions are not good, to say the least. We've heard from hostages that have returned that they're going through torture, that there's not food, there's no, that they're underground. And we, we hope that together, you know, the things that happened this week, whether it's this new coalition of countries that are working together and this video that shows that they're there, they're alive and they need to be brought back intensifies any kind of action that needs to take place right now to, to pressure Hamas to let them go, let them go and bring, you know, some calm to the area. Anyone asking for a ceasefire without asking the release of the hostages is a dense, is putting a death sentence on our kids. Uh, Hirsch, outcry we felt was the outcry for our son as well. There's no time, it's urgent. And you both have been traveling the world, trying to get the word out about your son as well as the other hostages. Why is that so important for you to make sure that these hostages are, are not forgotten? Listen, um, we met with world leaders. Uh, we met with President Biden. We constantly meet with the National Security Advisor and his team, Jake Sullivan. Of course, we met with uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and with the uh, Secretary General Guterres at the United Nations. I also met with the uh, Prime Minister of Qatar. It's critical that those leaders will do everything they can and they'll see us, they'll hear the stories of the families, they'll understand that it's real people, like Orna said, that it's true humanitarian crisis that must come to an end. And it's not just numbers, 133 hostages from all religions, from 21 countries. This is not just our problem. We are the parents, of course, we, we want our son back. It's a problem of the world. But the, just the cycle of news is so quick, you know, and we feel it ourselves. Things change so swiftly um, in the region and in general in the world. And we feel that we have to keep this issue front and center and and until it's resolved, until they're brought back. And it's it's exhausting. You know, it's it's a fight for attention and um and for urgency. And it I can tell you it's really exhausting, but we have to do it. Uh we have to keep up hope. If we don't do it, who's gonna do it? And I do want to ask, do you feel that the Israeli government is doing enough to bring your son and the other hostages home? As I mentioned, I've talked to many different families over the past several months, some who have said Israel is doing all it, all it can, others who have said they don't feel that enough is being done. So, so I do want to hear your take on that. We've also visited to Israel multiple times. And over the course of these seven months, there were different phases where um, Israel had to be pressurized at this point. And I think this is also stated um, in the, by the 17 countries that came out this week and the coalition, the pressure is on Hamas. We've been told by all parties that there's a good deal that Hamas should accept. And Israel had accepted it and the pressure right now is on Hamas to accept that deal and bring de-escalation to the whole area by accepting the deal. The, 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 the proof is uh, once we get our, our, our child back and as long as he's there, nobody is doing enough. We need to do whatever it takes. Israel must do whatever it takes. United States, Omar being an American citizen, must do whatever it takes. And, and, and so does uh, the negotiator that, that help um, and, and of course, the pressure must be put on Hamas because there's a good deal on the table that can bring relief to the people in Gaza. Let's not forget, 
the Gaza people are suffering because Hamas is not agreeing to the conditions that all the countries agree are very reasonable. So they are holding their people from ceasefire and they're holding our son hostage for over 204 days in terrible conditions. That's that's simply unbelievable. Thank you both so much for taking the time to join us here to share your story, your son's story. Is there anything else you want to add at all before I let you go? I think we we're asking everyone in the world that wants any kind of calm in the region and there are voices out there to make sure that we get this straight. The hostages are a global humanitarian issue. Their release will bring calm to the area and that should be the demand of everyone that wants to bring calm to the area. All right, Orna and Ronan, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to be here today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.